Hello bankers, welcome to Olive Board. So today we are going to discuss Bank Financial Management Module A, International Banking Unit, External Commercial Borrowings. We will discuss Macmillan MCQs and we will learn the concepts behind these MCQs. So let's get started with our first MCQ. So here is the MCQ, who among the following is not our recognized leader under ECBS. What is ECBS here? See, this is external commercial borrowings refers to like we can say that loans raised by eligible residents such as Indian companies or corporations from recognized non-resident entities typically in foreign currency. These borrowings can take various forms including bank loans, buyer's credit, supplier's credit and credit from official exports and current uh, credit agencies and commercial borrowings from the private sector window of multilateral financial institutions. Here we will discuss about Asian Development Bank, these four options. So that is external commercial borrowings. ECBs are used to facilitate access to foreign money by Indian corporations and public sector undertakings that is PSUs. They are governed by Foreign Exchange Management Act and regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Now what is ADB? Asian Development Bank is a regional development bank established in 1966 to promote economic growth and cooperation in the Asia Pacific region. ADB basically headquartered in Manila, Philippines and has 68 member countries with 49 from the region and 19 from outside. Basically, ADB mission is to reduce poverty and promote sustainable economic growth in the Asia-Pacific region and it's aimed to improve the quality of life of people in the region by providing loans, grants and technical assistance to its member countries. And International Finance Corporation is a sister organization of the World bank and a member of the world bank group it is the largest global development institution focused exclusively on the private sector in developing countries for and then foreign equity holder we can say is like foreign equity holder is an individual or we can say company or an institution that holds basically ownership shares in a company or business entity located in a country other than their own. In other words, we can say uh, a non for, for resident investor who owns a portion of a company's equity such as stocks or shares in a foreign country. And Exim Bank of India, the Export Import Bank of India is a primary financial institution in India that provides financial assistance to Indian exporters and importers as well as foreign entities engaged in trade with India. The bank was established in 1982 under the Export-Import Bank of India Act with primary objective of promoting India's international trade. So here we can say that the correct answer of this question is Exim Bank of India because this bank is not a recognized leader under ECBS. Moving to the next question here, which of the following entity is not an eligible borrower for raising ECBS? So here are the options given, registered partnership firm. What is the meaning of registered partnership firm? Basically, registered partnership firm is a type of business uh, structure in which two or more individuals known as partners come together to carry on a business with the goal of earning profits and here we can say our registered partnership firm is a partnership that is registered with the registrar of firms as per the Indian Partnership Act 1932. So as you can see here a registered partnership firm is a type of business entity formed by two or more individuals who agree to share profits and losses. It is a legal entity separate from its partners meaning it can own 
property, enter into contracts and sue or be sued in its own name. What is sole proprietorship? Sole proprietorship basically is the simplest form of business ownership. It is owned and operated by single individual who is solely responsible for all aspects. It is type of a business that is owned and run by person with no legal distinction between the business and the owner. The owner is called the proprietor. So if we see the question here, the correct answer is here, both registered partnership firm and sole proprietorship firm. That means our D option is correct here. Moving to the next question, yeah, most important that is what is form ECB2? First, we will learn about this form. The form ECB2 is an important document for reporting ECB transactions and borrowers need to ensure that they submit it on time with all the required details. And basically, you can see here include all the details of the ESB transactions, uh, including any changes in ESCB parameters, failure to comply with reporting guidelines in re respect of form ECB2, including failure to adhere to periodicity of reporting may invite panel action under FEMA. And FEMA, we know that Foreign Exchange Management Act, which is a which is legis uh, legislation in India that regulates foreign exchange transactions and it is enacted in 1999 to replace the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act 1973. And uh, we know that the primary objective of FEMA is to promote the orderly development and maintenance of the foreign exchange market in India. And it aims to facilitate external trade and payments and to promote the economic growth of the country. If we will learn about uh, ECB2 form, it is a monthly return that needs to be submitted by the borrowers. It should be submitted through an authorized dealer category first bank. It needs to be uh, submitted within seven working days from the close of the month to which it relates. It should include all the details of the ECB transactions. It should include any changes in par ECB parameters. So here the correct answer is option D. If form ECB2 is a monthly return. Moving to the next one. Question is saying which of the following sector are prohibited to receive FDI into their equity? What is the meaning of FDI? We know that foreign direct investment. We can say it is a type of investment where a company or individual from one country invest in a business or asset in another country. This investment can uh, take can be in many forms like acquiring or uh, stake in a foreign company, establishing a new business in a foreign country, uh, merging with a foreign company, acquiring assets or equipment in the foreign country. So many types are there in this. So we can say that in this, when a foreign investor investor invest in a company equity, it means they are acquiring a stake in the company's ownership structure. This type of FDI is also known as equity FDI. FDI into equity can bring in new capital, technology and management expertise to host the country and it can also lead to increased competition, improved productivity and better access to international market. So if we talk about the correct answer here, so the correct answer of this question is railway sectors are prohibited to receive FDI into their equity because this will not include it in re receiving FDI into their equity. So correct answer is here option D that is railways. Moving to the next question, firms portal. Most important, firms portal, what is the meaning of firms portal? The firms portal was introduced to integrate the reporting structures for various types of foreign investments in India 
and some features of the uh, forms portal are like auto acknowledgement the forms portal automatically acknowledges the submitted forms with a timestamp verification and also late submission uh, fee and if we talk about here the foreign investment reporting and management system that is form is an online portal that allows businesses in india to adhere to the reserve bank of india foreign direct investment fdi filing requirements also if we talk about the correct answer here is the answer facilitating refund to remittances under fdi okay and here one word is odi odi we know that what is overseas direct investment what is overseas direct investment this is an investment made by an indian entity in a foreign country so some example of odi include like purchasing equity in an unlisted firm subscribing to a foreign entity uh, memorandum of association investing 10% or more of a foreign company paid up equity capital so here the correct answer of this question is option d that is facilitating refund of remittances under fdi moving to the next question that is fcgpr refers to here see what is fcgpr uh, basically fcgpr we can say that is like foreign currency gross provisional return the filing requirement comes into play when a business entity secures foreign direct investment and subsequently allocates shares to a foreign investor the purpose of the fcgpr form is to report the specific transaction to the rbi okay a typically submitted uh, entities dealing in foreign exchange transaction to their respective uh, tax authorities and also these returns provide a preliminary overview of the foreign currency transactions that have occurred during a specific period they are often used to calculate provisional tax liabilities or monitor compliance with foreign exchange regulations so here the correct answer is foreign currency gross provisional returns we will discuss these three top three uh, options here what is the meaning of foreign collaboration gross provisional returns basically here they are typically submitted by entities involved in foreign collaboration agreements to their respective tax authorities and these returns provide a preliminary overview of the income and expenses relating to the foreign collaboration during a specific period now they are often used to calculate provisional tax liabilities or to monitor compliance with foreign collaboration regulations what is foreign currency general protocol permissions it is like refer to the specific guidelines and regulations established by government or regulatory bodies to govern the use and exchange of foreign currencies within a country these permission often outline the procedures documentation requirements and restrictions associated with foreign currency transaction and now foreign collaboration general protocol permissions refers to the specific guidelines and regulations established by government or regulatory bodies to govern foreign collaborations within a country okay these permission often outline the procedures documentation requirements and restrictions associated with foreign investment joint ventures technology transfers or other form of foreign collaboration so we will cover we covered all the mcqs of this unit that is external commercial borrowings if you like this video so comment on this video subscribe to this channel and also like to this video we will meet in our next video till then take care thank you